Hey, welcome to another post Tweet Jam takeaways. Uh, and, and Dana, thanks so much for joining today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Christian. Thanks for having me. So why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll just jump into the topic here. Sure. I'm Dana Simberkoff and I am the Chief Risk Privacy and Information Security Officer at AppPoint. And the topic today is perfect for you. It's the making collaboration secure. And I know that the with the questions, we'll, we'll run through each of those today. And uh, you know, I I think that the now you hear my dog upstairs, yeah, as we're <laughs> recording. Uh, but uh, you know, as we as I I'm interested in hearing people's opinions about what they're doing. It's always interesting to get some validation of, of things that we're doing or to identify here are arguments for and against. I think what's interesting, the research that I've participated in firsthand over the last decade, year after year after year, whether we're talking about a specific tool or platform like SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, when we're talking about broader knowledge management space and inside and outside of the Microsoft ecosystem, security has been the number one concern all that time. In fact, a startup that I was in back in 2001, 2002, you know, as we were had a hosted collaboration platform where we had the dedicated cloud platforms. We weren't referring to it as cloud, but a dedicated, you know, cloud is environment. Just somebody else's computer, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> and, but when we had that environment and it, and trying to get those first customers to adopt SaaS solutions and things, you know, again, it was all about security. And back then, it was probably more true that they could be more secure. Their their policies were stricter. Their standards were higher than a lot of the service providers. Uh, we've come a long way now. It's just yeah. It's a I mean, world. it's you know, I was chatting with somebody the other day about you know the evolution of IT and IT teams were really created when you know there was everything in a room in you know your company and that's where all your servers stood and all of the you know hardware and software was really contained and managed by you inside of your environment. So yep. there has been a huge evolution in all of those things. Well, let's jump right in. So question number one uh, we asked, is co collaboration security an active component of your internal and customer planning? Why or why not? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that you need to make this a priority inside of your organization. And certainly at AppPoint, it's part of our culture. It's part of our, our message because I think that you have to balance um, security concerns uh, and build them in, you know, build in security by design by design into, into whatever you're doing, because people only share things that they are comfortable sharing. If they, if they share information or work together on a project that leads to a, you know, data leak or inappropriate access to information, then that kills confidence. Not, not only can it create, you know, regulatory and legal problems for your company, but it erodes employee confidence, customer confidence, and, you know, shareholder confidence too. So I think it's a fundamental component. It's almost like a three-legged stool, stool yeah. right? Where security and collaboration have to work together to enable the business to function. Well, and if you're having as part of your change management practices, as you're part of your governance body, that as you're developing solutions, again, whether you're building your intranet and your content data management, you know, policies internally, or building a product that you're going to go out and sell. If you have, you know, all of those players at the table that can answer the question, say, like, what's great that you came up with these features, uh, but here are some of the risks from a security standpoint. Is there a different approach to, to providing that feature or solving that, that, that requirement that is going to uh, you know, allows to be compliant and and secure. Yeah, well, I'll tell you that from a security um, perspective, if you if you make um, if you make things so secure that you impact usability, then your end users will go around your system. Right. So you know, you really want to make why it we easier. Ask that question later. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you want to make it easier for people to do the right thing than the wrong thing, and you want to sort of build. Um, you know, the better future inside of your technology stack with controls that allow people to, you know, drive that car faster. I use the analogy all the time to brakes on cars. 
people think they're there to slow you down. But the first cars were invented without brakes. And you had to drive really slowly and carefully. And, <laughs> and without seatbelts. <laughs> exactly. No oh, brakes sorry. and no seatbelts. Exactly. And so, you know, those things, those are the um, the brakes and security and privacy controls are uh, the the controls that allow us to optimize our use of data, to drive faster, to, you know, really excel in our businesses, whatever they are in. Without those controls, we have huge risk that, you know, ma- makes it untenable to go forward. Well, question two is right on this this point is, would you say your organization prioritizes usability over security or vice versa and why? Because that's, you know, it, it, and I kind of jokingly commented in there about this, it's the chicken or the egg. Like, which mm-hmm. which do you do, do you, uh, around approaching this? And that's why it, it, it needs to be this iterative process. It needs to be an ongoing conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think they're inextricably intertwined, so I'm not even sure that that's a a question that can be answered. I I kind of think about it in a slightly different way. You have to say what you do and do what you say and be able to prove it. So you have to balance, again, those security priorities with what the purpose of your application is. And, you know, if you build a, a, a room that no one can get into and out of, then nobody's <laughs> going in or out of the room. Maybe that's so, the requirements. I mean, that's what you want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're building Fort Knox, right? I mean, that's... It's you just going to have my Star Wars figure collection in I, that room. And I, we'll... I think, yeah. I think the reality is, look, you know, we can't protect everything from everyone. So you have to take a very pra- pragmatic approach to prioritizing what you're protecting from whom. Because the other thing as security professionals is we have to get it right 100% of the time. And everybody else, you know, that may be creating a th- threat, whether it's intentional or unintentional, insider or outsider. And most problems come from unintentional insiders that are just doing their jobs and making mistakes. Um, they only have to make one mistake. They only have to, you know, click the wrong link once and every company has somebody that will click anything, right? They only have to click that one time to to put everything in jeopardy. So uh, there's no perfect security. And I think you have to find that balancing act. There, I I remember I was doing a session in San Francisco giving giving a talk and I asked the question to the room of does anybody here who, who believes that they have a 100% percent secure environment we're talking about sharepoint at the time you know sharepoint environment one hand went up i'm like all right i have to hear this she says all of my users have read only access or view only (laughs) access yeah and i was like okay well that uh, like even then i would argue you You know take a picture right that's right yeah there's there's other issues there but uh yeah. And then we started joking about, you know, if not for these end users, if we could have an end user free environment, that would be that room that no one could access that is just exists that's out there that has my Star Wars figure collection. Exactly. And that, uh, you know, Total automation, no human intervention. But Correct. that's yeah. not the world we want to live in, right? No, so, no. Yeah. Well, question three is, is, what are your primary collaboration security concerns and how are you mitigating those risks? So what does keep you up at night? What risks? Well, I think it's there's pretty foundation, foundational concepts, right? It's the one that I already mentioned, which is, um, you know, you have to say what you do and do what you say and prove it. But then I think it really then fills on a more practical level, level to data, Um what kind of data do you manage? How do you create it, collect it, use it, share it, and end of life it? Where does it live? What are the containers it lives in? How are they managed? How are they provisioned? And um, the people, you know, who who has access to data? Do you have least privileged access? How can data be shared externally, internally? So it's really, you know, the information, the the place, and the and the method of transmission where data is stored at rest or in motion and then you know ultimately archived and and then you know people but um all three of those things are equally important i i also think at a at a foundational level we um protect what we treasure and we improve what we measure right so if you don't know what you have (laughs) then and you can't measure your uh, ability to protect it Mm -hmm. then you know it's very difficult to improve 
that's one of those concepts that I mean, I go back to business school and and uh, an operations management class, learning about W. Edwards Deming and the process of that, uh, you know, of uh, you know, continual process of continual improvement. Yeah. So the, you know, the Kaizen concept, but what that forces you to look at is like, look, we're meeting our requirements and fine. They're like, there's no alarms going off. Things are moving along fine. But as people are using it, you're finding other opportunities, you know, it's we've misclassified some information. So the measurements were correct, but we didn't have everything in there. And so by constantly looking at constantly refining, constantly asking those questions and improving upon that, there's always something to go and do. New data is always coming in. Um, users understanding of what they have access to, what they don't ask, you know, have access to. I mean, those things change. The technologies, of course, that we use change and evolve so that we need to constantly be reviewing and iterating on that strategy. Yeah, I think it's very similar to the role which, you know, came into fashion a couple of years ago now, but this idea of a chief data officer whose job it is to optimize and make sure that we have quantitative and qualitative um, you know, really good functioning and performing data that, you know, integrity of information is very similar to, you know, the security framework. We want to make sure that, you know, we're protecting and um, curating the right information and that it's getting into the right hands, right? You yeah, want to give people access to what they should have and, you know, not give them access to what they shouldn't have. Well, and that's also, it's interesting the, on the qualitative front of that too, is by looking at it from that perspective, how are people actually using it? Are they, are they successful in getting their work done? Are they, do they enjoy using the solutions or are they, or is it just a struggle for them to get in there and do that? And so that's, we go back to that previous question of that trade-off between those two things. And, and a lot of times you, you, I mean, you can't be unsecure, but you then have to look at, okay, how are we, we're now compliant, we're now secure, how are people working? And there's another whole place to iterate on and improve on those plans because yeah. people may be struggling to get their work done. Totally. I mean, we don't want to- That's where wanna... shadow IT comes from. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you want to build better, right? And you want to make sure that you're constantly improving and gleaning the program making sure that you're moving the bar forward. And I see security as a service to the business, as a service to our employees, as a, ser a service to the company, and as a service to our customers. That's our mentality. And I also see it as everybody's job. So that's, you know, I think it's it's um, very easy to say, oh, my security team is going to take care of it. But it really begins with every single employee in the company and their commitment to making sure that they understand how they should be securing their environment, how important it is. Um, similarly with privacy, that this is really a culture. It's not something that is just somebody else's job. It's all of our jobs. Yep. Sorry for that ring phone. I am turning that off. There we oh, go. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry, my, that's what I had to turn off my alerts and other things as, <laughs> as much as we try to do when this stuff just happens. That's oh, the, my goodness. It's the, the beauty of working from home, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> So uh, question four was, uh, so how does your organization handle guest access and external collaboration as a whole? I'll just, I'll just tell you like, uh, so I, I mean, I, so I do a lot of collaborating with you know external groups and with, I run the app point community champions program and have kind of all these different things. And, and I said, I, I said, I'm going to make a request and go and build out this team site. And I heard from a couple of different people. It's like, ah, our, our policies is everything's just so locked down and, I, let me know if you have trouble getting <laughs> approval for that. Like I went in and made a request for an external facing team for this purpose through our provisioning process. And in under two hours, it was live. Yeah. So we, I mean, we've tried to make the process in collaboration with the business and IT um, using our own products, using AppPoint products that we provide to our customers, um, self-service to the greatest extent possible. So. We do require that, um, you know, that there's a business sponsor and a business need for somebody to have that external collaboration site. There are often very valid business needs, but 
they need to be limited. They need to have sponsors. They need to have approval. Uh, they need to be, you know, reviewed and monitored and recertified on a regular basis so yep. that, you know, they're not just out there forever because we need to know who has access to what, whether they're, you know, our own employees or external people. If, you know, we have a problem or if they're sensitive data, then we need to know, we need to be able to do a forensic analysis on that and see, you know, who was able to access it. So, you know, I'm grateful that I learned some of those lessons very early about information management. I was, so before I get married, I was a, a runner for a law firm and for about a year after I was married. And so I did all of their offsite storage management and I was very involved where they, where they said, it's like, look, the seven or 10 years, whatever it is, has come to an end on these files. They must be destroyed. We need confirmation that they're destroyed. It was, you know, a very detailed process. It, it, and so I had a senior partner that I became friends with was out at his house, you know, delivering, you know, a signed subpoena or something, doing some extra weekend work. And he actually explained to me, uh, like some of that process and why, what the legal risk was over still having some of that content in place. So I, I appreciate that process of reviewing those sites because sometimes Hey, I'll be honest. It's a reminder. I go in and realize, you know, hey, that has been stagnant. Out. Do we really need that? No, let's go consolidate. Let's get rid of that. And then let's just remove that entity, that site, that site collection, that whatever that is, all of the associated content, protect those things which need to be archived, which we need to maintain, and everything else cleared out. It cleans well, up my navigation. Yeah. yeah. And particularly if it's like a project related site, right? So if you're working on something with a customer, uh, or a partner and that project comes to a close, you know, there may be statutory, regulatory, or contractual requirements for you to delete, you know, that information. And, you know, if you have it, you have to protect it. So I'm a big believer in less is more. <laughs> if we don't need data, move it along. And, you know. Exactly. It, and it's, uh, the next question fits in with that. It's like, how do you know that you need it or not? And so the question five was, how important is information architecture and data governance within your collaboration security planning? Well, it's extremely important. I mean, that's really the key. And and I come from a long line sort of historically in my career of, you know, big believers that metadata is a love note to the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the ability to know the origin and the purpose and the retention cycle of information is critical to the ability to use it effectively because there is such an abundance, whether it's in the cloud or on-premise of redundant, obsolete, trivial information that that actually clogs productivity. So when you talk about collaboration with confidence or collaborating securely, that ROT data that we call it makes it very much more difficult for end users to be productive, for people to find things to ensure that what you're working with is the latest and greatest and the valid piece of information. So it ties to that strategy of, again, the basic security framework that I talked about, which is the life cycle of information. You know, what do you have? Who has created it or collected it? How is it used? How is it shared? And how is it end of life? That ties directly to the same circle of where does it live? How is it shared? Is it protected in motion and at rest? Where can you sh share these things and in through what systems? I mean, we have a whole data protection data handling framework that talks about different types or different classification of data and the spaces where it's okay to work with it and who can access it. Uh, companies that are public have requirements around material non-public information or trade secrets or protected information that, again, has to be protected and limited um, in use and, you know, may go from something that is top secret to public. So you have to have a really flexible information architecture and data governance plan that ties together with your security and privacy protocols. We didn't really get into this, but uh, it, it, during the tweet jam, but do you see a gap for a lot of organizations around uh, the rise of chat based platforms so teams, Slack, as well as video? It's like video is the new document. Oh, There's so much 100%. content being out there. And yet my experience, what I've seen is that it's treated very differently. It's not tracked. It's not. Uh, you know, besides storage, it's but not there's classified. not the information architecture. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, you know, we have regular 
you know, Teams conversations, chats, video conferences that are recorded that, you know, have, you know, sometimes very sensitive data in them. And 100 percent, I think that more instantaneous and this is funny, but I remember when Microsoft um, first bought Yammer. This was years ago when I was at a SharePoint conference and the Yammer guys got up on stage and said, you know, Yammer is um, to Microsoft what a water cooler is to an office where, you know, all these conversations are so piped around a water cooler and now they're going to be available to the enterprise. And everybody was cheering and saying, oh my God, Yammer is so great, which it is. I love Yammer. Yep. But um, I was thinking, well, water cooler conversations are intended to be private. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that that analogy may not be as strong, but the the you know one of the things that again, being somebody who's a huge advocate for social collaboration technology yeah. for so many years, and one of the voices that was out there in the SharePoint world for years, they and and something. you know yeah. and, and needing that, and I, I'm a fan of the Yammer platform, but it's because so much of the context of conversation uh, is happening around projects and content things just lost. It's just lost oh, because it's not being it's instantaneous and then it's gone. Right. right. And, and it needs to, we have to understand the relationship of chat of the conversation that happens in the margins uh, around the documents, the files, the, you know, the images, as well as the video. I mean, those three major components, I, I guess, and this is a broader it's, topic. It's super which, interesting because I, you know, even in my own personal experience, uh, you know, we've noticed that, um, you can't capture everything that's being said in a meeting um, with no's. And so, you know, more and more often we're moving to recording the meetings so that somebody can come go back through and actually transcribe them. So wouldn't that be a cool feature of Microsoft? Yeah. That's <laughs> why I'm a huge advocate for um, have auto record for Teams meetings yeah. and auto transcription so that it's instantly. Well, auto record with opt in. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, I, so I'd rather have it by default and then opt out. But, ah, but, but that's privacy and security by design and by default. So you got to be careful with things I like know. GDPR. <laughs> that's, that, that's that's me personally. But it's uh, but I but I understand that it, it, again, depending on the type of meeting and yeah, of course, and, and who's in the meeting. Right. Yeah. Well, so the next question here. So we have two more. Uh, question six was with security as the number one concern for collaboration. Where are the greatest organizational gaps in security today? I think I just outlined one. You know, around yeah, I mean, I think you did. I think there's, you know, just information that is lost in translation that is instantaneous and then gone and isn't properly captured. Um, I think that there also is um, a problem sometimes, and it does depend, it's, you know, situational of information overload that an organization can get sort of so excited about collaboration platforms that they end up with all of these, you know, different, we, we used to call it SharePoint sprawl, but right, sort of like team sprawl, where you have all of these different places that information is living and conver conversations are happening. Now, I mean, AppPoint actually has some solutions around this that helps make it better. But I think people generally, um, just like SharePoint was kind of like candy and people get addicted and started setting up all of these different sites, that can happen easily with teams. I, and, well, I yeah. remember having a conversation, it was funny, after a SharePoint Saturday in Finland, and, uh, you know, at the, uh, like attendee at a pub, you know, afterwards getting in conversation, getting in an argument with, with, uh, somebody in the community friendly argument, but are around this, this idea that, you know, the problem is that there's too much content out there and we just need to, you know, limit the amount of content. It's like volume of content's not the problem. No, what that's we've not seen the problem. The in organization the last decade, right. Content. Is the organization of that, and then the tools, the refiners, the, yes. the, the ability it it just brings to prominence once again, yet again, the importance of search. Search is still a critical function in all of this. Well, and and search is not only a critical fun function. I agree with you, but it's also probably one of the most dangerous <laughs> tools yeah. from a privacy and security perspective too, right? Because if you don't have that proper information architecture and data governance and data classification and protection framework in place, then search. And some of the other great features that Microsoft has um, that show you, you know, who's talking about what and conversations that may be relevant to you or documents that may be relevant to you, that all can quickly become a security hole. 
where you're exposing confidential sensitive data that wasn't intended to be exposed. And this happens, for example, all the time regularly with things like passports. Yep. Right. People will need to post information about a vaccine status or passports or, you know, personal sensitive financial data, healthcare information. And, you know, they think they're putting it somewhere that's private, but they're actually putting it somewhere that's searchable. And then, hey, everybody has your, you know, bank account number. Right. Yep. That's a very common. Now, that's easy to control for. It's easy to prevent. But if it isn't planned for properly, that can be, you know, a concern. Yep. Well, the final question was for an organization at the start of their collaboration planning, what steps or security guardrails would you suggest they begin with? Well, I think that for most companies, and I always imagine that, you know, someday I would be in a company that had nothing, had no data, no anything. And we were just starting this imaginary company that, you know, was going to start everything from the beginning. But but in reality, that almost never is the case. I actually have never worked with a customer who was brand new and just saying, I'm envisioning a company and yeah. I have nothing yet. So I, I want to set I it up have, perfectly. As a founder of a startup, that was my experience. Okay. Well, that's well, we awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's uh, right. I worked in a startup too, but it was still like, by the time I joined, there was a lot of information already there. So um, I think there are a couple of critical things, right? First, don't let perfect be the enemy of good, right? You have yep. to decide based on who you are, your industry, the kinds of information you hold, regulatory and legal compliance obligations that you have, um, you have to decide um, how to build security and privacy in. Now, again, most companies um, already have existing information. So I also think you have to be careful about um, paralysis by analysis, right? Because right. you want to make sure that you both have a backward looking view and a forward looking view, right? So you have your as is environment. And I remember talking to many CIOs and security officers about their file shares. And, you know, they have this sort of almost like a repulsive reaction and say that that's a toxic waste dump. And I'm not going to look at it because I know that there's all kinds of sensitive data buried there. But then, you know, they'll come along and it'll be time to move to, you know, Office 365 and everything just gets lifted and shifted. It's the shifts. cloud yep. where it's now searchable. So not knowing is never better, in my opinion. You're yep. better off to know what you have and have a plan um, from a regulator's perspective and from a sort of a, you know, Again, that building that trusted environment with your customers and your employees. Um, so have a plan. Make sure that you have a backwards looking plan that looks at what you have and a forward looking plan because you can draw a line in the sand, right? You can say, this is where we are today. This is where we want to be. This is what our ideal environment should look like. And so any net new content, any net new sites are going to be built this way. And we're going to take a, you know, a holistic backwards look at doing that ROT analysis of what we already have, cleaning it up, and then migrating it. And if you build that new solution, that ideal utopia <laughs> that has security built in properly with great usability, then, you know, people will want to move to that site. Look for volunteers, look for advocates in your organization, look for people who are going to be your security champions, because they're always out there. We have tons of them at AppPoint, very lucky to, you know, have a great collaboration across our really around the world of people that help us do this you know gracefully where we stand on the shoulders of champions because we have so many you know really amazing colleagues that understand how important this is well dana i'll just uh, with that i think that's a great place to to wrap up on really appreciate your time to uh, participate in the tweet jam as well as come on a little bit extra the, the after hours party here oh uh, yeah the one -on -one. <laughs> but uh, really appreciate it. important topic uh, looking forward to uh, you know we'll have this out in live and provide some links there of course you can find if you're listening to this on the podcast um, find out more i'll have uh, dana's contact information and some more links of some of the things that we're doing at avpoint so you can have a little more insight into our perspective on that uh if you just go to buckleyplanet.com and you'll be able to search and search for dana and you'll find her on the blog so Excellent. dana thanks, thanks so, so much, much Kristen. take care everybody